In this video, I'm going to show you how to create multiple specialist sub agents here instead of claw code where you can have multiple agents running parallels. So here you can see I have front end, back end and database sub agents here all running in parallel to building a full stack web applications using the sub agent feature built in with the claw code. Now, unlike the previous couple videos that I made on BMAP method and also the super cloud method where you have a framework that you have to install and follow to use the specialist agent that it defines based on that configuration frameworks that it provides you. But this video is gonna be different is because we're gonna use the built in feature inside of claw code to create our own AI sub agents that is specialized in a specific domains based on the problems that we want to solve. And some key features for sub agent here is that each sub agent has its own context window. So let's say if you're interacting with claw code for the main agent here, each main agent can call multiple sub agents to trigger the workflow. And each sub agent here have its own context window of 200 key tokens. And when they finish their work, respond back to the main agents. And like I mentioned, each sub agent here is fine tuned with a specific domains to achieve higher accuracy. And also for each sub agents here, we can actually reuse this across different projects and share it across the team. And most importantly, for each sub agents, we can allow each sub agent here to have a much better powerful development workflows. So pretty much that's what we're gonna cover in this video. If you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so to get started, first let me show you how to create the sub agents inside of Claw Code. So first what we do is we check to see if there's any agents inside of our Claw Code sessions. So we just do the agents command and here you can see that we don't have any agents in our Claw Code. So what we can do is we can create our first agent here by simply pressing enter here to create new agents. So here we're prompted with the option to choose where we're gonna create the agents. So one is we can be able to create the agent inside of this project, or we can also create an agent that works across all projects here. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna choose the project option, which works works specifically for this project. So if I were to enter this, and here in terms of creation method, we're just gonna generate with claw code. And the next step is simply just describe what the agent can do. So for example, someone who is expert in software engineering who review a code. So here, let's say if I wanna create a sub agent specifically for planning. So here, let's say if I were to enter this, it's going to generate the agent configurations based on the description that we provide. And next, we can also select tools that the agent can be able to access. For example, we can select all the tools that agent can be able to use. Or let's say if we don't want to have the agent to use the MTP servers, we can actually deselect this by simply pressing enter here or we can also show the advanced options here for all the individual tools that the agent can use so pretty much once we satisfy with the tool selections we can just click on continue and here we can also select the model so currently i'm using the pro plan so i'll just stick with the sonnet here but if you're using the max plan you can also use the opus here so once we select everything now what we can do is we're going to choose the color of the agents for example we can choose the automatic color here or we can also choose the color here that we selected simply we're just moving the arrow down or up to choose the color we want so here I'm just going to choose the automatic color here and the final step here is to confirm the agents So here you can see it gives a name for the agent called project planner Which here you can see has descriptions the system prompts So let's say we satisfy with this we can simply just press enter to save and once we save this if we were to look at the dot cloud folder, you can see that there is a agents folder. Here you can see we have our project planner, the MD file, which is gonna be the agent specialist that we have just created. So here you can see this is the name, the descriptions for the agents, the tools and models that we use for these agents. And here we also have the system prompts and also the approaches that are gonna follow, starting with the high level strategy questions before diving into details. So let's say if I wanna use this, simply all I have to do, just do the add symbol here to reference the specific agent that we created. So here you can see we have an agent called project planner. So we're gonna use this to create our project plan to plan our projects using the specialized agents. So here I'm just gonna select this agents and here all I have to do just provide the prompts for the specialized agents here to execute. And here if I were to enter this, here you can see that the project planner here starts to gather some requirements by asking some questions on the typical process for the sponsorship relation process. And here you can see I have provided the answer and now the project planner agent here starts to dive deep into the features or the pinpoints that we want to build or that the product here want to solve. And here you can see, I basically mentioned a couple of things for the features. And here you can see the project planner here started to create a comprehensive product requirement documentations with the application that we want to build. And eventually here, it's going to create the PRD file based on the things that we're asking for. So everything looks good. I'm just going to prove this and we're just going to say, yes, it's going to create this PRD file inside of this project. Awesome. So now you can see that we have our PRD file created and here you can see this is the full PRD for this project. And here what we can do now is we're going to create another agent here. It's going to break this PRD file into actionable tasks or stories that the large language model can be able to follow and be able to create. Very similar to the spec driven development from Kiro, where we first define the requirements, the design, and then we break down the project into task lists that we're gonna be able to have the AI agent here to be able to work with. So in that case, I have already gone ahead and created that agent called the PRD task breakdown agent. And what we're gonna do inside of claw code is we're gonna use that agent here. So we're gonna say PRD 
task breakdown. So we're gonna tap this. And if we were to look at this agent here, you can see that it's gonna decompose the product requirement documentations and the product requirements that we have. So here, what I did here is I basically referenced the PRD task breakdown agents. And here, what I wanted to do is to analyze the attached PRD file and break down the project into front end, back end, and database tasks. And also output each list to a separate file so that different coding agents here can be able to work them in parallel without conflict. So that's pretty much the goal. And here, if I were to run this, and eventually here, you can see that we have three task lists for database, for back end, for front end. And eventually here, you can see that development is independent so that the front end can work with the mock data using the standard interface. And back end can work with the database contracts without UI independencies. And database here can be able to optimize the performance without breaking the API contracts. All teams can work in parallel with a clear integration points while building towards the Unify system. So here, what I'm gonna do is inside of our agents, I have a API architect agents, which is basically the backend experts. And we also have our database optimizer, which, which is specialized in designing the scalable schema architecture for the database. And then we also have the front end, but currently I don't think we have the front end. So I'm just gonna create this. And in terms of front end here, I'm actually gonna use the Shassian MCP server that I made a video on called Shassian UI Agents, which is going to generate a very beautiful UI for the front end by using the Shassian MCP server. So if you haven't had the chance to add that, please make sure to follow the video where I show you how you can be able to set this up on your AI coding IDE. And I will put the link for that video in the description below. But if you're looking to follow along for this video, please make sure to have the Shassian UI MCP server added onto the MCP server list. And the other part is is that in that video, I also mentioned a prompt specifically on how we can be able to instruct the coding agent here to use the MCP servers to build the UI for the front end application. So here inside of our clock code, I basically going to create a new agent here inside of this project. And here to generate this is going to paste the prompt here and let clock code figure out how it's going to create or generates this Shassian AI agents. And after running this, you can see that it creates the Shassian UI builder, which here you can see for this agent is going to look at the user request and building or modifying the user interface using the Shassian library components and blocks to build a modern accessible user interface. So in that case, we have our front-end expert, the back-end expert, and also our database expert. Then we can be able to use those three agents to basically execute those three task lists. So in that case, you can see that I have created three class sessions here and renamed them with different names. So we have front-end agents, back-end agents, and also the database agent here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to execute them one by one here. At first, I'm gonna use the Shassium AI Builder here. And here I'm basically saying that, please complete the following task list from this .md file. And here you can see that I'm currently running on the bypass permission mode. So it's gonna run this by itself. And then we also have our backend here. So I'm just gonna use the backend agents. So that's gonna be the API architect agents. And I'm just gonna say, please complete the following task list from the backend tasks.md file. And here, I'm just gonna enter this. It's gonna execute this as well. And then here we also have another agent here, which, which is expert in database. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna also execute that as well. All right, so pretty much you can see that we have our Shassium UI builder, which is focused on building the front end application side of things. And then we also have our backend API architect specialist here, try to create the backend API for the application. And here we also have our database agents, which specialize in database tasks. So here inside of our project, you can see that we have our database folder, which contains a bunch of SQL scripts for this project. All right, so while this is building, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Bitover. They have built a central memory layer for modern dev teams using coding agents. Now, chances are you have been in this situation. You're coding with an AI IDE like Cursor or Clock Code, and you have spent all your time carefully describing your project context, but the next day when you start a new session, all of the knowledge is gone. And you have to waste time explaining everything from scratch, or maybe you're working with your team, but all the valuable lessons from past interactions, the best practices, the bug fixes are all siloed. They aren't shared across the team, so your colleagues' agents keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And you know that basic rule files like claw.md file just aren't enough for the massive code base. Or maybe you start in cursor, switch over to Gemini CLI, or any other agents, and none of that context carry over. But byte over here solves all that. What if your AI agents can actually remember all that context permanently? With byte over, your project knowledge is saved. Everything from high-level programming concepts to specific business logics, past interactions, bug fixes, even the model's own reasoning steps. This gives your agents maximum context, enabling smarter, more accurate code as your project grows. You can think of it as a unified memory layer shared across all your favorite coding IDEs like Cursor, Claw Code, 
VS Code and more. So it scales right alongside your code base. For all my fellow open source fans, Spiralver just launched Cypher, an open source memory layer that you can plug directly into your IDE with zero configuration. Both of these tools are designed to make your coding agents more intelligent and genuinely useful. It's completely free to get started, so to check out the link in the description to try it out. All right, so eventually you can see that we have the full application built, which here you can see we have our sponsor pipeline, which has five different columns here, and each column has different cards. And we can actually move one card, for example, to a done column, for example, and I can be able to view the card. So each card has the contact info, the price, deadlines, and we can also change the theme here to dark mode uh, using the chassis and UI library. So basically you can see that this is the full stack web application, which contains the front end, the back end, and also the database. All right, so pretty much that's it for this video. And you can see that this is a really simple application. It's not really perfect, but at least it really shows how you can be able to use different sub agents here that each agent is specialized with different domains. And we can actually have multiple sub agents here to run in parallel to build a full stack web applications where we have the front end, the back end, and also database. But obviously we're not limited to just those sub agents you can see that I have also created many sub agents that I have not used yet, but you can see that we have the accessibility auditor, mobile web specialist, system architect, and so many more. And there's also websites called Claw Code Agents, where you can be able to discover all the AI agents to enhance your development workflows. For example, let's say if you are a product strategist, there's different product strategists that you can choose from, for example, growth engineer. And once you find a really cool agent, you can click on this and be able to get the agent prompts to create that agent inside of Claw Code. And let's say if you're a developer, you can also do that as well. So there's also system architect, API builders, UI designers, QA, operations, and so much more. And if you really want to level up your development workflows, you can also add additional tools and MCP servers onto your sub agents here. For example, you can use the contact seven here to fetch the update documentations, or you can also use Playwrights here to automate your browser interactions, or another tool called Taskmaster, where you can break down the task into smaller tasks using a MCP server, which I already made a video here, which you can check this out. And there's also tools for Figma designs for Figma context, where you can be able to add those MCP tools onto your claw code and be able to grant access to those sub agents and be able to allow different sub agents here to access those tools and use them to level up your development workflow. So pretty much that's how we can be able to use sub agents here. Now, if you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.